Yes, Ben, I think we can start, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think some colleagues will still come, but I would like to welcome you. Good afternoon to this uh, 19th uh, RESIS uh, research seminar, the first uh, research, uh, research seminar after the summer break. And um, I welcome you today to this seminar on behalf of uh, Benedetta Lepori, who is uh, usually coordinating the seminar series, but uh, um, cannot participate today. So I will um, guide you through this session. My name is Thomas Jangel, and I am in RESIS responsible for the centralized access to RESIS datasets. So I can also motivate you if you don't know the RESIS datasets portal yet, you can come to it, uh, propose your research, and you will get uh, the data from us to conduct it. Um, today, we have a very interesting uh, presentation by uh, Ben Jungblatt uh, on funding for performance in European higher education, trends and lessons. And we have really uh, a distinguished scholar here uh, of the field. So Ben is a senior research associate at CHEPS, at the Center for Higher Education Policy Studies of the University of Twente in the Netherlands. He is an expert on issues of governance and resource allocation in higher education, higher education economics, has published widely uh, in this field and also been involved in many national and international research projects uh, for clients such as the European Commission, but also the OECD and national ministries, of course, in particular in the Netherlands. Um, also, he was part of the team that developed U MultiRank, uh, a, a very important uh, project in that context. And also in the RESIS context, as you may know, he is a, a national expert also in the RESIS related project ETA, um, where, we, where he is a very important expert in terms of data collection. Uh, for higher education yeah, institutions. Okay, so Ben, I'm handing over to you and we are very much looking forward to your presentation uh, uh, that will be around 35 to 40 minutes. And then we have two discussions basically today. Um, uh, Gunnar Simonsen uh, is uh, so to say the invisible uh, discussion today. Uh, he can unfortunately not participate, but Agatha Lambrechts will present his and her uh, uh, thoughts and remarks to the presentation. Ben, the floor is yours. You can share your screen. Okay. Well, before I do that, uh, nice to see some familiar faces and nice to see some unfamiliar faces there. So thanks for uh, joining in this webinar. Uh, indeed, my name is Ben Jungblut. I uh, will entertain you for uh, an hour and a half on performance-based funding. Uh, on the basis of a presentation that uh, is based on a, a research report that is about to be published and uh, that I will tell you more about. And one of the co-authors is also in the room, uh, Ariane de Gallardot, uh, and one of the, the, the clients is also in the room. I see Mark uh, Goffin also uh, among the audience. So I will uh, share my screen now and uh, I hope you can have a look at uh, yeah, my slides now. It should be okay, eh? yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the title, as Thomas was saying, I'm going to talk about funding for performance in uh, higher education. What are the trends in, uh, that we see across uh, the European member states and, and some other countries around Europe? And what are the lessons we can take uh, from all this, in particular the lessons for policymakers uh, like national governments or the European government, perhaps. So this is the, the title. Um, like I said, it, uh, my presentation is based on a, on a big study that we just uh, finished uh, this uh, summer for the European Commission, for the, the DGE um, directorate. It's a study that looks at performance-based funding and how how its impact looks like in the, the different countries uh, in Europe. Uh, and the study also has a second question, which is whether performance-based funding in some way could be a, a useful or a reasonable instrument to apply to the, to the national funding of the European universities that we now have seen appearing for a few years now. But I will not uh, 
discuss that uh, that second question. I will only focus on the first part of the question. So what is the, the state and effectiveness of uh, performance-based funding in, in Europe? Uh, I was overseeing this project for the past year and a half, um, but uh, of course you can't do a project like this on your own. Uh, you, I was very much supported by a colleague uh, of mine in ICF, which is a, a big consultancy firm based uh, also in, in, in London, Cecile McGrath. Uh, and I was uh, uh, very much working together with two of my JEPS colleagues, Harry de Boer and Ariane de Gallardon. And our project had a, a couple of advisors who looked at the work we did uh, during the, the past year, year and a half. You see their names here. Um, so this is the question. The question is, does performance-based funding work? And can it, and, and, and does it perhaps even in the future support the European university alliances? Uh, like I said, I will only focus on uh, the first part of the question. So does performance-based funding work? I will abbreviate this with PBF. Uh, and uh, we're looking at uh, the, the core funding of higher education institutions. That is the year-to-year the -year funding that universities and other higher education institutions receive from their funding authorities, let's say from their ministry. And uh, that is the funding that is the biggest chunk of the of the revenues of uh, most higher education institutions in Europe, since they are mostly publicly funded. And we are focusing on the all 27 EU member states. And, and looking at the effects of performance by funding, we look at the effects that are obviously uh, the ones that uh, the national funding authorities go for and uh, the intended effects, but we also look at some of the potentially less desired unintended effects just to see what what this systems produce in terms of effects uh, this is a colorful picture that shows you all the all the sorry all the, the countries that we looked at and there's a couple of countries that have uh, federal systems like spain and, and germany and for those countries we we looked at uh, some of the the regions not not all of them but overall we we managed to get to get a quite good mapping of the of the state of affairs when it comes to uh, the core funding of uh, higher education institutions and so we did a study of course starting with a decent literature review and looking at academic literature uh, what what can we learn from that and and what can we use from that to collect more information from the, the responsible ministries uh, in the 27 European uh, higher education systems that we looked at. Uh, so we did a study uh, based part, partly on a survey uh, asking the responsible authorities about the design of the system, uh, the underlying goals, uh, whether there have been evaluations of the system over the past, uh, let's say, 10 years and, and what the impacts of the systems have been on the various dimensions, uh, indicators, if you like, of, of performance and, and what, what that performance actually is in those 27 European member states. So apart from the survey, we uh, ask people uh, more directly face-to-face -face or through online meetings uh, in interviews to go a little bit deeper. And to go more even even more deep we also try to uh, look at the impacts of performance based funding in eight different european uh, member states so we did a couple of country case studies we also did studies of the two two european university alliances but i will not talk about that by the way and when we did those eight more case study uh, 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 studies we we in particular asked about the, the kinds of evaluations that had been performed in the countries, the evaluations of funding systems and the changes in the systems that might have resulted from that. Uh, and our part of this was inspired also by, by looking at the effects of, uh, of other of funding systems in other uh, countries be beyond uh, the European Union. Of course, uh, the United Kingdom is, uh, is a first candidate because they have a very performance-based uh, research funding system, but we also looked at uh, Canada and we looked at um, United States and to see what they have, uh, uh, have, have in terms of experiences. 
And um, towards the end of the project, we, we, we did an expert meeting uh, where we asked uh, more than 20, uh, mostly researchers, but you might also say some policymakers uh, about their opinions on performance-based funding and asking them to, to reflect on the big question of whether performance-based funding actually works and in what way it, it, it works or it could work. So like I said, we, we looked at 27 European member states. Uh, for each of them, we had a contact person uh, uh, collecting the data in the 27 uh, um, funding systems. Uh, these are the names of the, of the people. Uh, so we, we asked them to collect the information or coordinate a collection of information. And, and for some of them, uh, for some of these countries, we did uh, more deeper case studies. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, like I said, we, we were focusing on the core funding of uh, higher education institutions. And this is shown in the picture on the left-hand side. So you, you'll see that core funding uh, can be or organized uh, by means of a funding formula or a more negotiations-based approach. So a funding formula is a very, let's say, straight, more algorithmic type of, of allocation where uh, numbers drive the, the allocations that go to the to the institutions negotiations based approaches are uh, more bilateral uh, approaches where the ministry or the funding authority is negotiating with an individual institution about how much funding uh, the institution is, is getting for the next year those two approaches can be a mix of performance and and more input based uh, uh, approaches and if it's performance based uh, in, in a formula, you will have performance indicators driving the formula or entering the formula and, and providing uh, the, the basis for the, for the allocation to the institution. If you have more input related criteria in the funding formula, you, you might think of uh, information on, on student numbers or staff or uh, square meters in buildings, things like that, driving the funding uh, uh, allocations. So that's a, the funding formula. And uh, negotiations-based approaches can be either more performance-based, uh, so they can lead to an, a performance contract negotiated between a, a higher education uh, authority and, uh, and an individual institution based on uh, the expected outputs or performances to be delivered in the, in the next few years and leading to a, to a budget for the institution. But negotiations can also be very, let's say, input driven and, and based on, on line items, more traditional way of, of funding where uh, you, you more or less continue the, the different elements of the budget from one year to the next based on some decision making rule taking into account things like growth in institution and, and inflation. And so that's a more, I would say, very traditional, uh, uh, historically, often historically based approach. Uh, historically based or incremental allocations are also shown on the right hand side. They have been increasingly replaced by approaches based on formulas and, and negotiations, uh, as we'll see in a minute. But forming uh, funding uh, systems that, uh, that drive core funding uh, do not uh, work in isolation. They, they are part of a wider uh, system where institutions uh, also receive, uh, uh, let's say, incentives or allocations from other parts uh, in the system. And so you'll have on, on the right hand side of this picture, you, you'll see that uh, it's not just core funding that institutions uh, uh, receive they also receive more project based funds which are often competitively awarded uh, and they can be awarded by research councils or by ministries and, uh, and but in the end uh, what what we'll do is we'll focus on on, on performance based funding and uh, we looked at the literature and and we did a couple of searches for information from, from the literature based on earlier work we did and work done by others, uh, on, including the European University Association. They just did a big survey and study on, on uh, the allocation mechanisms for the core funding. And there was a report a couple of years ago 
not too long ago by the OECD, looking at the, the resourcing of higher education. And all of this and, and a lot of other information uh, gave us, the, let's say, the starting point for, uh, for the study that we did, uh, because we wanted to know whether the literature already could, could tell us a little bit about the, the impacts that, that one might expect from performance-based funding, the impacts on teaching, teaching and learning, but also the impacts on research and perhaps even impacts on what some say is the third mission type of uh, activities that we also see in higher education. But what we found from the literature is that there's not a lot of studies on the impact of performance-based funding that you might say are very uh, thorough or uh, uh, deep enough to qualify as, as a study that, that can uh, lead us to general conclusions on performance-based funding. There is actually very little research on the impact uh, so we cannot draw a very firm conclusion. So our study would hopefully fill that gap a little bit. There are, of course, quite a few studies on performance-based funding in research uh, because it's a, a topic that um, uh, that was very much uh, pushed on the, on, on, the, on the agenda of policymakers by uh, examples from from the United Kingdom, where you have the research assessment and now the research excellence framework uh, system that drives the research funding in, uh, in universities over there. So there's, there's quite a few studies on, on the impact of those systems for, for research, including in, in other Anglo-Saxon countries, but there's not a lot of studies on the impact of performance based funding in, in teaching and learning. Uh, this slide shows you some of the literature that we uncovered and most of this is from the United States actually. Uh, on the top you'll see a few uh, references to uh, to Scandinavian countries. Uh, there's been a bit of research done on, well, quite a bit actually, on performance funding in research in Denmark and, uh, and some other Scandinavian countries. Then there's been a bit of research done on performance-based funding in, in places like uh, Finland and uh, in Denmark. And you'll see some names over there, if you manage to read this, uh, names like Kivisto from Finland or uh, Agart from, from Denmark. And, but also uh, my discussion, Gunnar uh, Sigurdsson, he's been doing uh, lots of work on uh, performance-based funding and research advising governments all over the world on how to organize and design the system. So what, what we are looking at is the core funding of higher education institutions and whether that core funding is driven by um, performance uh, incentives and actually also leading to changes in performance. The core funding is coming from the state budget on the top uh, and is flowing to higher education institutions in one way or, or another. Uh, you, you'll see this picture uh, coming from a book by Benedetto and, and, uh, and myself or a chapter from a book that uh, might be familiar. But the core funding is the thing in the middle. Huh? So the funding for the institution as a whole. Um, but there's also funding coming in, our revenues coming in through fees and the revenues coming in through uh, project funds and a bit of uh, contract funding from transnational, um, supranational uh, governments. So yes, there's three main uh, sources of revenues for higher education institutions and based on the, on the ITER data and our own uh, survey, we came to this overview of the three, yeah, the, the three main uh, uh, components of, of higher education institutions uh, revenues. Um, on average, the, the core funding, let's say the basic year to year allocation from the government is, is about two thirds of the higher education institutions revenue. The third party funds is a one fifth more or less and Tuition fees they differ quite a bit from one country to another, but it's on average 13, 13%. So it's, this picture gives you, with the blue uh, bars, gives you a, a sense of how big the core funding is in, in the different European uh, member states. So the core budget is, is the blue bar and uh, third party funding and the orange one and the, and the yellow one is the, the fees, uh, which are particular high in, in, in countries like uh, Ireland and uh, Croatia and so on. So I'm not going to dwell on this too long because we are going to 
focus on, on core funding, um, funding either based on a formula or a contract, and that is performance based. And so where the funding formula or the contract includes measures of performance. So having incentives in place that, that would uh, drive institutions or encourage institutions to, to pay attention to, uh, to performance perhaps. Uh, Performance-based funding can be used for education, for research, but could also be used for uh, for valorization or social societal engagement, third mission type of uh, um, activities. Uh, if it's a formula, uh, I already mentioned, then it's uh, core funding that is driven partly by things like the numbers of students that manage to get a qualification in the end, or the numbers of credits they accumulated over the years, and for research, an in, in, uh, often used indicator is the number of publications or the, the volume of external grants that is uh, that are acquired by an institution. So all of that is, is an example of performance-based funding based on, uh, on indicators that go into a formula. But you could also have performance agreements where institutions uh, are also, also taking these kinds of things into account, but also trying to, to express their other uh, ambitions uh, towards their funding authorities and uh, making uh, plans for the, let's say, the, the years ahead, uh, plans that, that lead to a particular type or level of, of performance in the next uh, few years. So what we're looking at is the left-hand side, once again, of that picture where we look at performance related criteria and either in the formula or performance uh, incentives in the performance agreement that is uh, struck between the institution and the funding authority. So we're not looking at uh, the other funding mechanisms that are also in place, uh, but we do know that they also have an impact on the performance. Uh, so this already gives you uh, the first uh, conclusions of, of our uh, of our study that it's very difficult to disentangle the effects of core funding mechanisms from the effects of other funding mechanisms uh, that are in place in a country when it comes to explaining or assessing the performance of higher education systems or of higher education institutions uh, because institutions receive core funding uh, institutional core funding driven by formulas or uh, a funding agreement uh, uh, but that's institutional funding for, is for the institution as a whole, but institutions also receive competitive funding uh, where this specific goal that is uh, um, attached to the, the project funds that are awarded competitively. I'm not going to spend time on this, but what we do know is that those competitively awarded project funds have become more important over the years. And if you take a historical perspective, you, you'll see that um, increasingly funding authorities, ministries uh, make use of, of project-based funding to, uh, to try and encourage institutions to pay attention to, to more uh, uh, things like, like, like performance. And so this is a, a picture that is familiar if you if you've read some of my work, uh, it, it tries to, uh, categorize the funding mechanisms uh, based on two uh, dimensions. On the vertical, you have the more centralized versus decentralized approaches. On the horizontal, you have the more input uh, versus the more performance-oriented approaches. And what, what we see is that there's a move from the top left to the, to the bottom right. Huh? So more attention for performance over the years in higher education systems, and also more attention for market-oriented approaches uh, where competition among institutions is, is encouraged, in particular by, by, uh, by project funding, but also by performance-based funding. Uh, so examples of those different systems in place can be seen in this picture. Uh, so if performance-based form funding formulas, for instance, the, the ones that are driven by, by degrees or numbers of publications, and you have more market-oriented, I would say, more decentralized approaches that are, uh, that are introduced by means of performance agreements or performance contracts on the bottom right. 
So we are focusing on the right hand side of, of this picture in our work and we sh we've, we've, from our information we see that funding systems are, uh, vera is, are quite different from one system to another. They change uh, quite uh, often and, and not to a large extent, but they are, there are minor changes and adaptations made uh, over time. Um, and we do indeed see that performance based funding has become more widespread over the years. Uh, either through funding formulas or funding agreements, uh, where many countries are introducing things like uh, the numbers of, of diplomas in, in their funding formulas or graduation rates. Uh, we see quite a few countries that make use of indicators like external research funds, funds obtained or numbers of publications in their research funding formulas. And, but they, they do often use those output indicators, those performance indicators next to uh, more input oriented indicators or input criteria. So it's usually a mix between uh, input and output indicators and also paying some attention to stability by introducing uh, or including some historical uh, allocations. We do see that over the over time um, countries have moved from um, more, let's say, uniform centralized uh, um, approaches that are, let's say, treating all institutions on the basis of the same criteria towards more dialogue-based systems, uh, where uh, there's more attention in, in, the, in the negotiation about the budget, more attention for uh, qualitative criteria and objectives. Uh, in our report, once it gets published by the end of the month, I hope, uh, we, we try to picture this uh, by means of a couple of graphs and diagrams. And this is the first graph that shows you the types of, of funding systems that are in place, the differences between countries. So you'll see that countries, um, quite a few of them have a mix between the funding formula and the funding uh, contract uh, or uh, some other historically oriented uh, approach. You'll also see that countries have a uh, different sizes of, of the budget, of different shares of the budget tied to measures of performance. Uh, the, the, the blue ones are the countries that have a very high share of core funding attached to measures of performance. And there's quite a few countries that have increased that share of, of funding tied to performance in the past 10 years. But, but the Scandinavian countries really stand out uh, in this picture. Uh, Flanders is another one. Uh, they have a very, very performance oriented funding system in place. If you combine the previous two graphs into one graph, uh, you, you'll see on the, on, on the vertical uh, axis, the types of funding, the funding mechanisms. And on the horizontal one, you'll see the share of funding tied to performance with countries on the left-hand side having no share of funds tied to performance. And those are the ones like, like Hungary, but also France. They don't have, as far as we know, and as far as they told us, they don't have any core funding tied to measures of performance. And on the right-hand side, you'll see countries, let's say the ones from Scandinavia, Flanders, Denmark, Bulgaria as well, that are very performance oriented in their core funding uh, systems either through a funding formula on the top right or a mix of a funding formula and a contract, which is the case in Denmark and, and, and Finland. Um, the countries in red, so the 28 of them in this picture, they have seen their performance-based funding share increase over the past 10 years. So countries like Bulgaria, Finland, and Slovakia have increased their the share of funds tied to performance, which is also the case for some of the other countries. So what, what we decided is we, we took eight countries from this list and we looked a bit more deeper into how they organized their performance-based funding system and what effects they have seen emerging from, from that, in particular the effects on, on performance. Uh, we asked those countries, uh, the ones at the bottom here, Austria, Bulgaria, Denmark, Finland, Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, and Poland. We asked them, how are your systems organized and designed? What are the goals? What are the impacts on different dimensions uh, of performance? You might say uh, the different missions, education, research, but also internationalization. And do the, uh, what lessons can we, so question number four, I will not 
talk about that in this presentation and what lessons can we draw from these case studies. Well, this is a picture showing the, the eight systems and how they look like. Uh, if you uh, if you look at the share of funding tied to performance, so they are quite quite heavily performance based. Uh, Denmark, eighty five percent of funds is based on, on measures of performance, like uh, credits of students uh, accumulated by students, but also bibliometrics and external grants, and that that sort of things are driving the the funds, in particular through funding formulas. But Denmark also has a so-called strategic framework contract in place that is negotiated and that also is um, paying attention to, to performance and trying to encourage institutions to to draw uh, yeah, to, 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 to express their ambitions for the next uh, four years and uh, and and to, to express that also in, in, in qualitative and also quantitative uh, measures. So you'll see here some some description of the eight performance based funding systems that we looked at and then we asked the people in the country and we asked them uh, also to back it up with with data and public and, and, and evaluations and reports we asked them what did you see as the positive impacts of performance based funding in your country on on the on the dimensions of education research and internationalization and on the top top row you'll see that there's quite a few countries that managed to to report positive impacts of performance based funding uh, as more attention at least paid to student uh, performance and also improvement in degree completion in some of the Scandinavian countries uh, and or more attention paid to quality so some of these effects that were reported uh, are more qualitative but some are also quantitative effects huh? so there is some statistics underlying those effects for research we also saw some improvements uh, in in the research output not necessarily in the research quality but but particular in a quanti quantitative sense there were uh, positive effects uh, impacts reported by the by the countries um, I will skip the internationalization dimension, but we also asked, of course, of, about the unintended, uh, perhaps the negative effects of performance-based funding. Once again, for education and and for uh, for research, um, but that that was less well, uh, let's say, uh, 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 reported than the, the positive effects, uh, but. Uh, there were some some hesitations about um, the, the, the the impact of, of some of the performance measures, uh, whether institutions uh, uh, perhaps made uh, some some choices that that focus that made made them focus more on, on quantity instead of quality in education as well as in research, where institutions reported that that their research is. Uh, published or tended to publish more in, 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 uh, in English language uh, journals uh, compared to their, their native language uh, uh, journals. Uh, there were also uh, negative, let's say less positive effects reported in the sense that some institutions uh, found it difficult uh, to, to keep up with uh, the, the more prestigious uh, Let's say the well-performing and comprehensive institutions in the country because they, they they did not manage to to score well enough on the indicators that uh, expressed the research outputs or research performance. So there was a some has some 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 more negative impact reported on the on on, on the issue of equity or let's say equality of institutions and how institutions how in individual institutions are treated as a result of the design of the funding formulas or the, the funding system in general this is a whole lot of information i'm sorry uh, but i wrapping it up uh, you can say that performance based funding uh, overall if if you if you balance the the, the positive and the negative effects it, it seems to incentivize the performance orientation in higher education institutions. So the systems help le at least reach uh, 
um, the funding authorities to the results that they are after. Uh, but it's very difficult to to, uh, to 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 be very very clear on the on the on the the causality between one one and the other. And huh? there's no studies that have tested whether this is actually uh, uh, statistically sound or uh, let's say a very uh, uh, rigid uh, type of evaluation that 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 has been performed. Uh, the systems do raise the transparency about the, the allocation of funding to the institutions and the legitimacy for the spending of, of large uh, volumes of public funds on higher education. Uh, so it has a kind of a political effect, uh, legitimizing effects, those systems. But and there's always a but here, uh, the, the choice of indicators that, that are included in the performance-based funding system is very much um, critical when it comes to, uh, to, to, to assessing the effects. Uh, um, the, the, the informants that we uh, consulted and the literature that, that they pointed us to uh, show that the, the types of goals that are included in the performance-based funding and, and the weights attached to the indicators in the system are very important uh, uh, to understand the effects and uh, also the negative effects uh, for, of the system. Um, there's, there's lots of worries about uh, the types of indicators uh, when it comes to uh, the autonomy of institutions, their freedom to, uh, to express their, uh, their missions and uh, uh, to express also that, that some of those institutions have a different mission than, than another institution uh, because there's a risk of of, of and reinforcing the inequalities that exist in the system. Uh, and we, we show that there is also a risk of unintended behaviors. If you perhaps put the weights uh, too high on, on, on particular indicators, it, it might drive the institutions or the, even the researchers or the, or the academics in the institution to, to an in, unintended type of behavior. But overall, we do see that the systems do have a tendency to strengthen competition uh, instead of institutions working together. Uh, a bit of competition may, may be good for the, for the system's performance, but you, you can have too much of, of a good thing, perhaps. Huh? You might also want to, to encourage institutions to collaborate. But our main conclusion is that the overall impact of performance funding depends very much on the design of the system and the context in context in which it functions and the traditions. Uh, so we we did see in the eight case studies in particular that the systems can increase uh, education performance and and also uh, even research outputs in a quantitative sense. It can even improve internationalization. But there's also systems that show some negative unintended consequences. Uh, I mentioned some of these already. Uh, that the bibliometric indicators, the choice and the selection of them can, can have an unintended uh, effects for the, the kinds of publications and, and the numbers or even the quality perhaps. That uh, the second bullet is really important that institutions sometimes feel that they are placed at a, as a disadvantaged position compared to other, let's say more well-established big institutions sitting in, in in big cities with in a rich, more, let's say, well-to-do an, an environment. And so there's a really uh, risk that, that a uniform funding formula can, can reinforce those inequalities between institutions. And the third bullet shows you that uh, uh, the institutions that have a particular mission uh, cannot always express that and their performance on that in that mission and express that in the types of, of indicators and that have been chosen to, to play a role in the funding systems. So these are some of the, let's say, more negative consequences of performance-based funding. Uh, and we did see that quite a few of the 27 European member states uh, went uh, towards a more dialogue-based funding system and where more, more and more countries try to introduce uh, at least next to the funding formula something like a performance agreement. It can have different names to improve the performance of institutions but also to encourage 
institutions to, to think more critically about what they want to achieve for the next few years and do that in a dialogue with the funding authorities. Um, we, we've seen that this, those dialogue-based systems can strengthen the, the differentiation between institutions. So um, acknowledging the fact that institutions are different and, and play a different role and have a different mission, different profile. Uh, and yeah, summing up, um, we see that uh, there's a diversification of funding sources. So next to core funding, we see more attention for performance, uh, for a project-based funding. Um, their performance elements are introduced in core funding over time and, and gradually, and, and sometimes it can work well, but uh, it can also be work, working less well. But there's lots and lots of differences in how you implement and the choices you make uh, can have a big uh, um, impact on the kinds of effects that you that that we can uh, see. Um, yeah, for the rest, I think I need to speed up a little bit here. Um, uh, I'm going to skip this because I'd like to come to the more like policy recommendations that we had to do uh, for our client, of course. Uh, our study was not just uh, stock taking, but also meant to uh, come up with, uh, with policy recommendations. So we can hopefully learn from studies like this about how to design funding mechanisms and what kinds of elements you should have in, in, in place in, in systems like that. Uh, when it comes to designing funding mechanisms, uh, it, it might make sense to think about the three ingredients that are listed here with a stable core funding that gives institutions some autonomy and uh, can be tied to performance agreements, perhaps. Uh, a second element would be a more performance-based core funding element that, that rewards institutions on the basis of past performance. Uh, so giving them some incentives to, uh, to go for the, the kinds of performances that the funding authorities have, have in mind. And a more forward-looking element, which is not necessarily uh, core funding, but it's, it's more or focusing on the future and driven by, by competitive, uh, let's say, project funding and to make institutions uh, uh, work on, on innovation or new things, uh, innovations in teaching and learning or in research. So our recommendations for policymakers were these things. So performance-based funding, it can be implemented, but you'll need to handle it with, with care. Think critically about the goals, metrics, and the shares tied to performance. It, might, uh, makes, it makes sense to co-design the systems with the higher education sector. So to, to, to think about the metrics and the, and the, and the, and the, and the rewards and the, and the punishment perhaps that is uh, implied in the system. Um, institutions feel that they, they have to be able to express their individual profile and, and, uh, and, and, and ambitions, and that cannot always be done by uniform indicators that are indeed the same for, for every institution. So it's a really a balancing act between uh, national level aspirations and, and, and individual institution level uh, uh, goals. The balancing act where all of these things that are at the bottom here somehow might play a role without overloading uh, the system. Um, so it's a balancing act that is represented by this nice little uh, animation. Uh, and these are six of the of the policy recommendations that eventually will appear in our report. Uh, so think about uh, the design of the system before you start implementing it in terms of the, the goals, the aims, um, try to critically uh, assess the, the, the kinds of performance uh, informations, inform indicators that you, you'll need to have. Uh, do this, and that's, an, that's another recommendation, try and do this in, in, in consultation with the higher education sector. Uh, and do not start immediately with really high shares of performance based on uh, the shares of funding based on performance and to try and, and and be modest perhaps in the beginning and you might want to gradually increase that if the system goes well but uh, don't put all your eggs in this basket of performance-based funding 
that's the that's the message and the fifth one is that uh, institutions uh, really need to be able to express their individual ambitions and and um, and missions in, in, the, in the funding system next to the ambitions, of course, that governments have in mind for, uh, for the system as a whole. So that should be some sort of at least a degree of choice and flexibility in the, in the system. And of course, the sixth one is that uh, changing the system towards more performance-based funding works much better in, 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 a, in a situation where there's more funding made available. Uh, compared to a system where it's all, uh, so let's say, a zero-sum game where one winner uh, is winning at the expense of, of, of another or others. So that is, th these are the six policy conclusions that we uh, managed to, uh, to, uh, to come up with. Uh, a little bit of further reading and then I'll end. Uh, uh, Benedetto and, uh, and Diana Hicks and myself, we will be so soon uh, publishing this book on research funding uh, and some of the chapters in this book are, are looking at performance-based funding in, in research, including a chapter by Gunnar Sievertsen and there's another chapter by uh, Lucy Kivisto from Finland that is also looking at performance-based funding in research. So this is a little bit of publicity for the book when it comes out. If you'd like to read it already uh, with at least some preprints, you can go to this website. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, sorry, it took a lot of time, uh, but uh, looking forward to the discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben, for the very highly interesting presentation. Uh, you stayed in time almost, so it's not uh, <laughs> big of an issue. And I would like to hand over directly to Agatha for providing us the comments from Gunnar Sievertsen and yourself uh, in, a, in a short discussion. Thank you very much, Thomas. Uh, I hope you can see the slides. Uh, as I say, I'm stepping in for, for Gunnar, so this is largely built on, uh, on his um, uh, input. And we've had the privilege to see the report, uh, which hasn't been published yet. So the comments are based both on the, on the slides and the, and the report um, itself. So first of all, uh, some general uh, comments. Uh, uh, we both felt that the study is obviously going further than the, the earlier of views uh, that are available uh, in Europe, updating it, but also extending, combining uh, the information based on sources uh, from uh, all the uh, EU countries. Uh, and it couldn't be done uh, and by a better team. Uh, we felt that the report efficiently combined the deeper understanding of the variety of funding systems and how um, they work uh, with the wise practical policy advice. Um, we really liked uh, this bit that, uh, as you say, comes up came up in, in some of your previous work as well, Ben. Um, let's see. Am I in the right place? Yes. So uh, some uh, comments, questions for discussion. Um, I don't expect you to be able to respond to, to all of them. So please be, be selective in, in uh, what you want to take up. Uh, so uh, we thought that uh, it could be linked to those six recommendations that you uh, shared at the end, but in particular, the, the number two, four, uh, and five. Uh, so firstly, uh, the, the recommendation on the smart performance measurement systems. Uh, if you could perhaps uh, elaborate here what uh, the term uh, means in this context, what information should be collected and published where? Um, do you think that basic data should be transparent or should it only be presented as statistics and indicators? Uh, is the uh, information, should the information be shared between the funders and the funded institution? It should be transparent uh, amongst all the institutions. Um, is it a value or an effect of the performance-based funding systems? Um, Formula-based systems? Uh, standardized information to provide comparability, negotiation-based system, prioritized types of information for 
individual agreements with individual institutions should both be provided and made transparent through the same smart system. Um, and then finally, some formula-based systems apply the indicators directly, while other systems use them to inform evaluations and decisions on funding awarded. Um, do you feel there is a need for the distinction to be made in the study or follow-up study in the future or and recommendations? Um, in relation to the fourth recommendation on the tying of a relatively high share of core funding to measures of performance. Uh, have you found uh, a basis in the data uh, that would say that even small shares affect the strategic priorities and performance outcomes at the higher education institutions? And if so, should the recommendation instead state that high shares um, of uh, core funding based on, on performance should be avoided. Um, is there a basis uh, in your data set uh, to differentiate between education and research when it comes to the share of performance related funding? Uh, is education easier to support with this type of funding? Do some countries separate the funding streams for education and research within the performance-based funding model. And finally, in relation to um, the fifth recommendation on the degree of choice, uh, Gunnar, I believe it's an a interesting proposal. How does it relate to the um, comparability and fairness between institutions and how, how funding is uh, awarded across a system. Um, and finally, um, a, a paradox perhaps uh, related to the table and, and the section in the report talking about the positive versus negative impacts of the funding. And in relation to Denmark and Finland, we see the uh, publishing in a uh, national language uh, decreases uh, in, in Denmark and Finland, and it's seen as a negative uh, impact of um, performance-based funding. Um, but on uh, in the report, uh, improvement in internationalization uh, is mentioned as a general positive effect. So we can uh, talk about uh, um, publishing in, in English as a um, element of internationalization of research. So there is a positive and a negative feedback uh, of, of the same. Um, and it's particularly interesting uh, in the case of Denmark and Finland because the, in their um, system they support explicitly uh, publishing in the native language, uh, which is rarer in other in other European states. Um, the two countries are part of the global trend towards internationalization in, in publishing in, in English, although not at a higher speed, um, but it seems to still be at the cost of uh, uh, publishing in, in native languages, which uh, as you know, can be problematic, uh, as, especially in relation to policy impacts of, of research. And that is all. Um, if you'd like to respond to any of it or not at all, um, or just use any of it as a, as a starting point for the follow-up discussion, uh, it would be great. Thank you very much. Thanks, Agatha for the compact discussion. And Ben, you want to react to it? I'm, I'm quite sure. Yeah, th th thank you, Agatha. And also indirectly, th thank you, uh, Gunnar, for uh, all of these uh, comments. Um, and, and, and also implicitly suggestions for further research. Um, indeed, that's a, there's a lot of uh, comments you made. Uh, you, you mostly are you 
explicitly only focused on the, on the policy recommendations uh, um, for the, this is great because well our research is supposed to indeed contribute to policy making uh, to make other others aware of, of the benefits and and the and the risks of, of performance-based funding and others being policy makers in, in national governments but also in, 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 uh, in Europe European uh, level uh, governments um, so about those policy recommendations they they <clears throat> they are just as good as, as the information or the evidence they are based on. Uh, and I, I said in my presentation that there is not a lot of solid research that you might say is, 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 um, is an evaluation in a strict sense of performance-based funding available. There, is, there, is very, there are very few studies on the impact of performance-based funding. And what we had to work from was information given to us by, uh, by my national policy um, makers, perhaps uh, people in ministries. And of course, we could not base ourselves fully on that. We, we also asked them to, to come up with the evidence in the forms of any documents, uh, reports that have been published in those countries. Uh, and even then we we could not fully expect to tell uh, to to be able to to uh, to make a story out of that we also asked our uh, our experts in the field uh, to to focus on on and to to discuss on what we originally found or found uh, halfway through our project so we asked uh, quite a lot of academics in, in, in Europe and the ones that know about funding uh, and you, co you can find their names in the report when it comes out. And we asked them also to reflect on, on the impact of performance-based funding. So we did not simply believe everything that we, we heard from, from, from our informants or in the, that we read in, in the reports. We tried to test this or triangulate this with information from, from others. Um, so this is what, what our recommendations are based on. And, uh, and, and we did say that, that the, there's lots and lots of different types of performance-based funding in place. Uh, there are formula-based systems, there are evaluations-based systems that, that are driven by peer reviews and things like that. And there are performance agreements in place uh, and all of them have, have their own impact so it's very difficult to generalize and it's also difficult to 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 to, to make the case that one thing leads to another i mean you, you can you can look at the impact on, on internationalization or publishing in international or native language uh, journals but it's uh, it's quite a stretch to say all of that is is driven by the by the performance-based funding system that is in place i can I think in particular when it comes to research, uh, there are other incentives at work there, eh? but they can be strengthened by the type of, of, of funding formula in place or the type of funding agreement or the uh, evaluation system in place. Um, but uh, yeah, when it comes to your, your questions about um, the design of the, are the performance-based funding systems uh, so what information should be collected and and uh, and, and what are smart performance performance measurement systems uh, mean actually i think every when when you when you um, design the system and then you want to decide on the kind of basic data that is included in the system you you really need to think about the objectives that a systems uh, of, of funding has uh, has to go for, and and in in what context the system is is going to be functioning. Um, so the word smart in the smart performance measurement system, I think it in particular uh, is meant to uh, to, uh, to 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 come to a recommendation that that kinds of indicators and the number of indicators is, is, is a very critical thing to 
to, to decide on, and that needs to be done in collaboration or in consultation with the higher education sector, because you can make really unfortunate um, let's say choices uh, when you decide on particular indicators. It's some some of those systems and information that we received uh, leads us to believe that there's a high risk of of strengthening the, the inequities in the systems and the, the inequities between the different institutions. placing an advantage on, 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 on an institution that happens to be in, a, in an economically well, uh, uh, well a, a very, very economically well doing, what's the word? Um, advantage region. Huh? Um, so you, you, all, you always need to be, think critically, be out critically about the, the indicators and, the, and, uh, and, 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 and to understand what I actually mean for the, the different institutions in the country or do they actually do they mean the same thing do they express the same performance for every institution uh, individually uh, you can have an institution that is primarily uh, catering to students from from the lower socioeconomic uh, categories in your population and that institution might might find it very difficult to to raise the performance in terms of student achievement, uh, whereas an institution in, in a more well-to-do area is, is and, and that is uh, having a lot of, of, of resources from other places that they can be doing much, much better. So you, you need to get the indicators and the information uh, right. And that's what we meant by, by, uh, by smart performance measurement systems. Um, uh, it, but smart also refers to the definitions, uh, and 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 also it refers also to the to the fact that some some of those indicators that are rewarded by means of funding formulas may be very difficult to control by an institution. Uh, I, I, I noticed that in, in Denmark. Uh, I don't know whether there's any Danish people in the audience, but there, there was at some point uh, the idea to introduce. Uh, graduate employment in the funding formula uh, and that could be a wonderful thing to try institutions to get to work on that but it might be very very difficult for institutions to 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 affect that kind of indicator so the word smart is also uh, emphasizing that that you you need to to choose indicates that institutions somehow can can control can change uh, by means of their own uh, efforts um, and smart is also smart indicators is, I mean it's also the number of indicators you, you shouldn't have too many of them in the funding formula uh, um, yeah but the main thing is I think to 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 really get a discussion going on on what actually is performance and what does it mean for for the different institutions in the country and then some institutions might find it more important to to focus on particular areas of performance and and not uh, on on all levels that are probably uh, important for the for the funding uh, authority. So that's why we say the degree of choice within the performance based funding system should also be something to 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 take care of. Uh, um, there needs to be. Uh, of course, uh, uniformity uh, to some degree on, in terms of the indicators and the goals uh, that are rewarded, but that might also be some more institution specific indicators that reflect the goals of individual institutions to recognize the, the different missions that, that institutions might have. Um, so that, that affects the, yeah, the, the design of the system. Uh, I just, Picking some random questions from you, Agatha, that, that I'm focusing on. Uh, but perhaps, yeah, there's more people from the audience that would like to ask a question. I can. Yes, exactly, Ben. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your response. I think we can open the floor for questions uh, from yeah. the audience. Uh, I, I saw uh, Arlette and Philippe raise their hands already. Now, also Franz. I think, Arlette, you were the first in the queue. You can maybe start. 
Uh, hi to all and thanks and Youngblood for the presentation and also for, for the impressive report. I have a lot of questions, but would like to focus on two if I may. Uh, one question is, did you find any country or any study uh, evaluating the stability of performance hierarchies? Um, the background to this question is that Thomas Heinze investigated um, or did a study on the German Excellence Initiative, which is, of course, not a performance based funding mechanism, but an excellence initiative. But we found that um, the um, that the su successive rounds of the funding uh, lead to an ultra stable distribution. And this very much um, puts into question the efficiency of the mechanism, because if you have performance based rounds of performance based funding or of excellence funding that award um, the same set of institutions in the set to in the same shares in each round, then all the administrative effort uh, is sort of perverse in a sense, because um, the system is so stable. In, in the allocation. And I wonder whether there's any country or study that investigated any of this. And my second question is, um, when I read your policy recommendations, I wonder whether they also imply a lot of criticism of existing designs in some of the countries. Uh, I, I did not investigate performance-based funding except for the case of Italy myself, and I compared Italy and the Netherlands some time ago, and I found the Italian mechanism quite uh, yeah, not transparent, and the indicators were really uh, yeah, could be criticized very fundamentally and so on, and I just wonder to what extent you also put criticism into your report of systems that are not designed in a good manner. Can I try and respond? Uh, thank you, uh, Aleta. Uh, yeah, difficult question, but good, but good, good questions. A uh, difficult question to answer. Whether we looked at us at the hierarchies between institutions. I mean, you can only do. As much as we no, can. excuse me. I just wonder whether you came across any evaluation no. that would do so. No, I I think I I mean you you're one of those experts that that would know about the existence of those studies. I guess you you and Thomas. I think you looked at hierarchies as well. But we we did we did not really study individual level data of of institutions. So what we what we what we collected and harvested is information more on a system level uh, from from our informants um, and they did mention that this is the things that you that you hinted at uh, are indeed uh, the, uh, the the potential effects of performance by funding system that you try and make the rich ones become even more rich uh, rich institutions I mean uh, and that you tend to to reinforce those those higher hierarchies, yeah? and whereas those systems that are more better designed, perhaps better than than the Italian ones, uh, uh, give some encouraging uh, uh, or give some incentives for institutions that are not doing so well and making them catch up with with others. So there is maybe some hidden criticism on some countries, uh, particularly the ones where uh, we show in that table about negative in impacts, the ones that that, that focus on, yeah, on, on the negative effects that, that they might want to reconsider their, their system. But we do not mention them by name, of course, because that's not the, what 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 we can do in a report that is based on limited information and and and, and the lack of uh, there's a lack of evaluation studies for instance also on the on the italian system but we we do indirectly say to those countries that that mention those in, those negative effects or those unintended effects we do indirectly say well there might be a reason to look at 
how systems in other countries have been organized and designed uh, to, to prevent those effects from appearing. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a study where everybody can pick from uh, and hopefully learn from uh, in particular policy, policy makers. I think, yeah. Yeah. This is what, what I can say at this moment, yeah. Um, I, I see Philippe, you still, you still want to react and Franz, Philippe before? Yes. Uh, first, uh, thanks uh, Ben and, uh, and, his, and his, her colleagues for, for the reports. It's a, it's a debate we have had for a long time in, in, in the UK with the ARA and its effects on universities. One of the, I mean, there's, there's never been a publication I know of, but I've seen a number of uh, data at, at, in the old times on the ARA, and there's a lot of debate about the RF on the fact that the distribution doesn't change. So distributional effects are very limited, only on the tail. So the lower end may suffer very much. This is what we saw when we looked at the data when we looked at the uh, collectively at the data on the RA. The, the top didn't change, even the middle didn't change. It's only the smaller institutions that did that were really affected. And the rest was the same over 10 years. So in the new systems, we asked, I mean, we looked at the results of the ref over the yes. And and we don't see we don't see many changes either. So you can say that because the system is is well known in advance, everybody prepares itself, and then uh, you find again the same type of uh, hierarchy, for the same time of capacity, no, re, uh, differentiated capacities. So that, that that that's a really central question for me. Why do you do you know? And I think it's, an, it, it's a really important evaluation question. If the output of that is limited, should we go on building data and data and systems and criteria without any transformation, transformative effects? So the question of the transformative effects is either at the micro level, you can show university change in the way they behave, practice, et cetera, uh, and at the macro level, whether performance over a long period changes uh, uh, the distribution. If it doesn't change, then should we recommend systems that are complex, time consuming, uh, looking more at control mechanisms that, than anything else? Uh, it's an open question for me. I don't discuss whether uh, the answer or whether it's bad or good, but it's an open question about what is the performance of such performance-based alloc funding allocating me mechanisms over time. Now we have enough experience to discuss that. And I really think it's a beautiful research topic still. So I hope you would have the data to tell us about it. And you just answered no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the data, Philippe. Thank you for your question. It's a really good question. but. And that, that's why I think evaluation studies are so important because they can focus on what a system like this, this one in England, REF or RAE, what it, what's actually costing in terms of transaction cost and, and administrative workload and what it, what it is actually producing. If it doesn't produce anything like change, then you might say this whole REF system is, is a big uh, expensive uh, accountability uh, exercise, which yes, is not... Yeah which is not driving uh, uh, improvement. Uh, so you may, you may question all of that, but our study did not, uh, yeah, could, could not go as deep as but maybe that. You, yeah. but, maybe you could open in your study, you could open the question at the end. Yeah, yeah. Saying that the next stage is about knowing the performance of these type of performance-based systems oh, uh, in, in the ability to change yeah. 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 Uh, um, uh, the system as a whole, the distribution in the system, the way the system is organized, the way the, distri the relative distribution, etc. cetera. Yeah. Because I really think it's, a, it's we have more and more data about universities in Europe, 
uh, thanks to you, Multirank, thanks to Ether, etc. And then we have a more a longer, a longer uh, we can have a longer time set of time series that enable us to analyze differently the system. Yeah. But you, you need you need longitudinal data for that, and and there's not a lot of that around. I can, and in England, of course, the UK is, is an exception, and some Scandinavian countries have the data in place, yeah. but many many other countries. Uh, I don't think they have that. I mean, Gunnar would be the person. He's not here now, but because he's traveling. But he's he would be the person that knows best about this, as he's, a, he's studying this as a bibliometrics uh, kind of guy uh, for ages. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the transformative effect can can hopefully be accomplished better by by the by the evaluation systems in place than than the funding systems in place. The evaluations of the of the education as well, eh? evaluation of, of because we're now focusing on research, uh, there, there might be uh, more to be expected from, from evaluation systems in terms of transformative effects than from funding uh, systems that are driven by, let's say, more narrow data uh, on performance. But let's, but yeah, that's not, focus too much on England. Maybe there's a colleague in the room that would like to focus on other countries. Yeah. Franz, you, you have you have another comment, a question? Well, just briefly to follow up on, the, on this discussion. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether uh, this performance-based funding needs to lead to a, a different distribution between institutions, but maybe a different distribution within an institution as well, that the, the yeah. type of activities is changing mm -hmm. there. That might be one of the things. Um, um, and one of the things, of course, these changes are quite incremental. I mean, volatility of this of funding system is seen as a great threat to the system. Uh, if it changes to, I mean, that's that's the whole reason why we have this, this, this core funding, that, um, that we have a stability in the system. And it, you can see in the Netherlands that there's a tendency to even enlarge this, this uh, stable core and take away uh, more performance-based elements in it, uh, just because they want to have more stability in the fund. But I, that, that's just a reaction to the previous discussion. I wanted to make a point on, on um, what is performance of the institution. Um, is the effectiveness of the processes, be it the teaching process, as you can see, for instance, in the Netherlands, where you can look at F, uh, number of degrees and stuff like that, or is it something different in the new uh, challenges that the institutions face, like equity? And Ben hinted already a little bit on it that mm -hmm. there is no audio. Seems that Franz um, yeah. is frozen. Exactly. Um, yeah. Franz, can you still hear us? Or uh, is just your picture frozen or are you out completely? And um, uh, Franz, yeah. can you hear us? Yeah, oh, I, yeah. We, we, uh, at least I missed your completely your whole last minute about. Maybe you okay. can repeat. Okay, this. then I, yeah, I got a, I got a message that I have an unstable connection. That's uh, uh, I'm an I'm at a technical university, so that's uh, very good. <laughs> um, but yes, um, what did I say last minute? Um, but, the, but the issue is that uh, a little bit. Um, what, what, are, what is the performance and the lack of indicators on the new goals? You know, performance is, uh, in, for years and for decades, defined in a similar way in terms of education and in terms of research. But we have also new goals, new challenges. And uh, for me, that would be a recommendation uh, to uh, stimulate the work that in ETHER uh, and in, uh, in a new multi-rank is done to uh, try to develop indicators on these new dimensions that can be uh, used within the institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something that's done now at the international level, but I mean, also at the uh, national levels, that should some, something be something that needs to have some priority, I would say. So not only focus on the traditional indicators on the traditional function, but, but how, how does the other performance come into this perform uh, funding? Or do you want to have it only in the non-core part, so in the project-based, which 
makes it mm. moves it again out of the primary functions of the, of the institution. So it's not a question, but it's more a comment. So. No, it is, but it's also a question. I mean, what, what kind of policy recommendations could could we also have included in the report about these mm -hmm. these areas of, of interest? And uh, I I think we should not over focus on on quantitative indicators uh, only, and we should also focus mm -hmm. on the more qualitative uh, goals that governments have in mind or countries have in mind, uh, and that can also be uh, included in, in in decisions on on funding. Uh, but I'm not saying we should not try and make indicators for those new goals like equity or sustainability or uh, innovations in teaching and learning or didactical uh, innovations but uh, we you you can only do uh, yeah you can you can you can you can only do a, a bit of work on on finding indicators for that but it's uh, I, I agree but you you have to really think about what are the kinds of performances that 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 we as a country would like to achieve or we would like to have the institutions achieve and that's that's why i i, I came with that first uh, uh, recommendation on you have to think about the goals of the system uh remember the set of recommendations the goals of the systems are very important but also the the indicators then that you would like to to connect to that or the or the smart performance uh, measurement or assessment system you would like to have uh, connected to that and yeah for that for those many new goals you you cannot really find immediately indicators or uh, or things like that you may want to also allow institutions to express these goals and achievements in a more qualitative uh, uh, let's say more yeah ref ref like way huh? where we're in in the uk now you you can come up with uh, 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 studies that show the, the impact of of an institution's research on the general society yeah? Uh, so yeah thinking about what actually is performance is is really crucial and uh, uh, that's uh, and that's something that is different for, for from one country compared to the other. Yeah, so yeah, for the rest of your things, uh, Franz, we can discuss this because you are my next door neighbor. We can discuss <laughs> it much further. Uh, thank you. Are there other comments, questions? From you, yeah, Eric. Eric, we cannot hear you, you have to unmute. Yes. yes, you hear me? Okay. Um, a short comment. I, I see uh, that uh, uh, France uh, has no uh, uh, dispositive uh, public uh, performance based funding in your, uh, in your slide. Uh, it's not totally exact. Um, there are, uh, if you take the, the beginning at uh, Beginning, uh, the, the beginning of the date at uh, 2010, um, and you consider all the decade, uh, we have strong, strong uh, policy uh, in France uh, in order to, to, to encourage uh, performance-based funding. We have a, 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 we had a, a formula which was called uh, uh, sympa, the model sympa, uh, which was not considered uh, as uh, so sympathetic, sympathetical for, for uh, the, 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 the university. Uh, what I, I want to, to, to point out is um, that we have a, um, a, a contradiction between uh, the policy agenda, mm. which is uh, very short and sometimes uh, to apply uh, a policy it is necessary to have a performance based funding uh, if not uh, it's considered as a word uh, without any uh, impact and it's not a policy but at the other hand uh, 
for the, the, the establishment for the, the university, uh, there is a great inertia uh, because of uh, uh, the, structure, the structural uh, organization of university, the staff, the salaries, uh, the, uh, the, the, the different costs. And uh, 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 we have the problem that uh, if we want to have uh, uh, an impact, we need to uh, freeze uh, the formula at, uh, during a certain time, a very uh, long time. And uh, uh, the problem is that the, the, the policy agenda is not uh, uh, adapted. It, it changes very rapidly. Uh, on the other hand, when the, the formula changes so too rapidly, for the, 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 the different uh, universities, uh, there are no impact. It's not possible for them. It's not possible to, 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 uh, to fire uh, personnel. Uh, it's not possible to, to hide uh, new personnel. It's not possible to, 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 to build new uh, research uh, uh, um, uh, uh, program. But in France, uh, one impact of a, a SAMPA uh, formula was to, to stress upon research. Only this, in the formula was taken into account uh, the, the graduation, the, the, the number of students, but also uh, uh, it's a little part uh, the uh, quality of research. Uh, there was many, uh, many discussion about how measuring uh, the quality of research, but only the fact that quality of research was taken into account uh, as, in, as uh, 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 an impact on university and schools also, higher schools uh, on research. They take into account in your in their strategy the research. Uh, when they, they didn't take account uh, research before. Well, I, 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 I hope you you, heard, uh, you understand what I said. Uh, thanks, Eric, for the reflection from your perspective. Uh, um, Ben, you do you still want to react to it or, or it's leave it as it is? Well, th thank you, Eric. I have to think about your question, but it's, it's, uh, um, the, the French model is part of our, our, our is, is, uh, is discussed in our uh, report, by the way. I hope it's discussed uh, along the same lines as you are now uh, discussing it. Uh, but I, we have we ha I have a colleague in the room, uh, Ariane uh, de Gaillardon. She's also from France, and she knows much better than I do about the French uh, system. Um, but I, I, I think in general, if you, if you look at what what performance-based systems can do, I think at least they can can express what what governments have in mind, and that may not be a, a very a nuanced. Uh, uh, picture of um, but what governments have in mind in, in sense of what, what are the goals that the government would like the institutions uh, to see achieve. So if, if anything that the performance based funding systems are, are, are the main impact is, is political, uh, perhaps it's, it may not be even uh, uh, meant to, to change too much in this system, but at least trying to put things on, on the agendas of, of institutions and, and that can can be a, a really important uh, impact of the system. Uh, so not, not changing the hierarchy of the institutions or the, uh, but, but trying to, to, to get all institutions to pay attention to, to some of those goals, let's say dimensions of performance that may have been overlooked a bit by, by the institutions. That's my reflection on, on Eric's uh, reflection. But maybe- Thanks, like, ben. Uh, Yeah, thank you. And I think that's also a good word to probably close uh, the session.
and thank in particular you again for joining us in, in the in the in the RISIS research seminar. It's extremely welcome, extremely interesting talk and topic. And also Agatha to you for, for presenting the discussion from Gunnar and yourself and also the audience for the lively discussion and lively uh, debate.